Yo, YouTube, I said, I told chat that I would be waiting, okay? I would be waiting a full week till I watched this video and until I talked about anything Spider-Man. And it has been that week, so I'm going to be talking about Spider-Man, obviously, while watching this video. Uh, I also, along with my whole theater, didn't know that there was going to be a third part. I didn't know this was bro broken up into parts. I, did, I literally didn't know that. I just thought the movies was, I mean, I mean even if it was break, broken into parts, I still, that's not an ending that I was expecting. I'm going to just say that off rip. So as soon as the, as soon as the movie ended, the whole theater was like, what? Wait, huh? <laughs> Wait, that's how it ends? I thought, I was like, because it was getting to the end. It was getting to where shit was wrapping up. And, it, and they were saying, oh my God, this, that, and the third. And I was like, damn, it's kind of like they're revealing all this shit. But it's like, how are they going to fit all this in? This thing like this movie about to wrap up. And then it just boom. Is there spoilers? Nigga, it's a Spider-Man across the Sp Spider-Verse breakdown. If you have not seen the movie, just don't go. If you have not seen them or, or, or yeah, if you haven't seen the movie yet, just don't, just don't be here. Just like just or don't you should not be on the Internet. Literally, there's been memes. There's been memes of, 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 of about this shit, bro. Lies of P type shit. What's up? Sorry, I had a text. Hey, rock stars, I'm Eric Boss, and this is a breakdown of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, a heartbreaking and stunningly animated sequel to 2018's Into the Spider-Verse, a movie filled with East. This movie's so good. This 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 movie's one first first. It's better than first the first one, and it's. Literally one of, like, it's top Spider-Man movies. Top Spider-Man movies of all time. Of all time, man. Spider-Man 2 still being, you know, still being, it's like, bro, but I'm, when I tell you it's like, it's like, ooh, it's like, ooh, man. Easter eggs, cameos, and incredible attention to detail. I'm going to break this. That, that part there? Spider-Verse. A movie filled with Easter eggs, cameos, and incredible. The look in his eyes, the music in the background, the silence in the theater. Incredible attention to detail. I'm that quick decision, that quick split decision on what are you going to do? Are you going to succumb to what the forces are telling you or pave your own fucking way? Oh my God. And then it's just, I'm just thinking back to the speech that he had with his mom when she said, don't let anybody tell you that you don't fucking belong or that you can't. Fuck oh my God. It and then it you can just see fight. and do the animation, that conversation First, playing in his head. And in his eyes, you can you can see him replaying that conversation with his head. What do I do here? This is a fight or flight moment. What do I do? Do I go? Do I go with what I know I could do, or do I just succumb to what they're telling me? Nah, I'ma do my own thing. Incredible attention to uh, detail. Ah! I'm gonna break this movie down frame Come by frame on, to point out a ton of details that you. I gotta see this again. I gotta see it in theaters again. Might have missed. I got to. And I revisited and broke down the 2018 film for dozens of new details, and I hosted a live stream of Across the Spider Verse on the Deep Dive channel. The 18 film for dozens of new details, and I hosted a live stream of Across the Spider Verse on the Deep Dive channel. So subscribe to the Deep Dive and support us with a Miles Morales Multiverse Dive shirt over at NerdRiot.shop. And uh, whoa, hey, look at that! I'm already wearing it right now. I'm gonna wear this shirt until I'm bleeding from my armpits. Okay, over the opening glitching logos for Sony, Columbia Pictures, and Marvel. There this shit was hurting my eyes, bro. I was like, I was like, oh my god. Ow. There is a brief Miles from his name tag in the 2018 film that he slapped on everything, and the Lord and Miller logo has their crest glitching to an old timey fine mustaches ad with the faces of the producers themselves and as mm. with the 2018 film we actually open with the approved by the comic code authority stamp which was put on comics covers in the 50s to reassure parents that the comics wouldn't glorify crime or corrupt their kids minds i love how whenever they go to like the, the different universes or when even something like an, an anomaly happened they like threw down a new magazine we open like, with Gwen so Stacy this time, framing this sequel as as much her story as it is Miles's. She says, let's do things differently this time, telling Miles a story third person instead of the first person perspective of the introductions of the first film. We see the selfie of Gwen and Miles that she had on her phone in the last film, where you can actually see Peter B. Parker's legs stretched out between the bus seats behind them. This was on their bus ride back, the first time they really connected. And we see Gwen drumming as a member of her band, the Mary Janes, setting up the wild drum solo music that we hear over the closing minutes of the movie as 
is Gwen reassembles her new Oh my god. But during Gwen's solo here, we see flashes of Miles' life from the first film, but also his upcoming battles with mm. Miguel in the spot. So really, this kind of serves as an overture or a prologue for the events to come. This is Gwen's home universe, Earth 65, and the animators designed it to have a pastel watercolor aesthetic. Live action with Dante's, they don't, I don't even know why, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why they're doing the like the live action. I, I don't know, but it's whatever. It's Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man. I'm a watch. I'm a, I'm a watch it. But like, bro, why didn't you say they're spoilers? This is a breakdown, Easter eggs and details you miss of the whole movie. Like it's going to be a, 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 from the start of the movie to the very end credits. <laughs> like, like you can't have a whole breakdown of every detail you missed. If you don't go through the film, like, like, what do you mean? You think, you think only there's amazing details at the start of the movie? It looks so great. The paint strokes flood into each other. A contrast. I like the way they had her move, like moving, bro. Like, oh my God. The harder lines and boundaries of the other realities. On the subway, Miles appears in the windows, recalling a 2018 film with Stan Lee appeared as an angelic presence on passing trains, which really hit hard back then because it was just a few weeks after Stan died. Gwen remembers before Miles when there was her Peter Parker. This Peter's voiced by Jack Quaid. In her flashbacks, Gwen has lost before Miles when there was her Peter Parker. This Peter's voiced by Jack Quaid. In her oh. flashbacks, Gwen has longer hair because this was before Miles stuck his hand to her hair and she had to shave it. Gwen flashes through several meals that she, Peter, George, and Aunt May prayed before, including one that might be Halloween. Peter dresses as a dinosaur or a lizard. Gwen in a traffic cone shirt. George is a cowboy. They're all eating. What is that? Bagels. This is the cursed food that led to the spot. And a 20 cowboy. And they're all eating. What is that? Bagels. This is the cursed food that led to- I gotta watch the first one again. Yo, this is, this is so stupid to make this guy like the main fucking- the main fucking villain, bro. I gotta watch the first one again. To the spot, and in 2022 became the symbol for the multiverse with everything everywhere all at once. The bully that roughs up Earth 65 Peter isn't Flash Thompson, it's Ned. As in the Spider Gwen comics, this Peter becomes a lizard, this is Halloween costume, which we actually saw at the end of Gwen's backstory in the 2018 film. And then we hear the voice of J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson reporting, Captain George Stacy is leading the manhunt for Spider Woman. Simmons voices J. Jonah Jameson in several different realities yeah. in this movie, including the Lego universe yeah. later. Yo, when this shit happened, I was like, wait, what the fuck is happening, bro? This guy is a freaking Nexus Bean, I'm telling you. In the Stacy family home, Gwen is water. And I love how, I love how he was like, you, what'd he say? You are a, you are a top or most valued Spider-Man or some shit like that. <laughs> Even when he propped up the little fucking thing, it was like, do, do, do. he did it with his mouth. What is this fucking Lego universe, bro? Our color painted blue and otherwise. One of our, that's what it is. You're one of our best. <laughs> pink wash showing her depression her room her sanctuary is also blue like she is but her dad in orange and fuchsia oh, wears a faded man. visions gymnastic academy sweatshirt suggesting he might have once done cheer and probably coached gwen's acrobatics when she was young he's a good papa gwen has replaced her teal ballet slippers with teal chuck taylors which she reportedly got from hobie brown so i don't know maybe they met before gwen teams up with miguel and jess in the spider society when gwen hugs her dad the blueness of her room warms into pink watercolor sometimes that's all it takes to change your whole world above gwen's door is a sign reading protect trans kids and some of you are mad now and if that pisses you off feel free to stop watching i don't need reviews spider -Gwen. damn got your ass got your ass bro good shit that's how you gotta be bro uh some of you are mad now but guess what i don't care i'm still getting a bag off of talking about movies get off my dick bitch webs up her dad so uh How's the manhunt for me going? Yeah, she lowers her voice just like Miles does when he is masked and he talks to his dad. Thank you for your bravery tonight. Now the vulture she fights glitched here from another universe and he's named Adriano this was so fire. instead of Adrian Toomes, voiced by Yorma Tacone. His design and his sepia color tone and his papery texture is based on Leonardo da Vinci's sketches. I like how when he fires weapons, da Vinci scribbles and instructions appear around him. He lands in front of mm. the Jeff Koons retrospective exhibit. This is a real exhibit at the Guggenheim with balloon animal fixtures made Guggenheim. from stainless steel. So Basically, this is a Renaissance era artist disgusted with postmodernism. It's just kind of an art joke. He says, which translates to bye girl on the screen. But Gwen is saved by Miguel O'Hara, voiced by Oscar Isaac, Spider Man 2099 from Earth 928, who first appeared in the 2018 film post credit scene. Gwen says, I'm sorry, who exactly are you supposed to be? 
Isn't it obvious? He killed, he killed this shit. The caped blue satyr? Yes, blue panther reference to black panther with similar claws. Caped blue satyr reference to Batman. Caped crusader with similar brooding. When he's introduced with this comic, it lands on the stack of the comics of all the other spider people we've met, including all the ones in the first film in the mm. order that we met them. I just like how this stack is cumulative. Miguel shames her and the others for breaking the multiverse in the last movie. And then he says, He started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 1999-99. Who's Doctor Strange? Sounds like he maybe shouldn't practice medicine. Spider yes, Earth. Earth 199999 has in the past been the numerical designation for the MCU films and the shows, but this was thrown into question when Christine Palmer called it 616 in Multiverse of Madness. I made a video proposing that the MCU deserves neither designation. Vulture reassembles his wing and Miguel complains, ah, he's got hammer space. And then we see an editor's note text window popping up, defining it as- Oh yeah, bro, this pop I did not have time to read this in the fucking theater an infinite extra dimensional storage area for cartoon hammers and the like. This is calling back Spider-Ham's mallet gift to Miles that he said could fit into any pocket and not take up any space. Miguel's digital assistant is Lila, voiced by Greta Lee, and she calls in Spider-Woman. Jessica Drew, voiced by Issa Rae. Yeah. Her yellow goggles match the shape of her yellow eyepieces in the comics. Overall, she has the red, black, and yellow color scheme like she does. And yes, she is pregnant. Are you, uh, oh, this? We don't know the sex yet. My husband wants it to be a surprise. He's really corny, <laughs> but... So high. Jessica Drew is pregnant in the comics leading up to the Secret Wars event, and we do not meet her husband in this movie. Presumably, we will meet this interesting character in the third movie, Beyond the Spider-Verse, coming next year. Now, when the vulture falls- Next year? Really? Falls. He hits a beam, and then text says, Notte Notte, Bet. which is Italian for night night. And the three of them stop the helicopter from crashing over the bystanders, and one looks up at- Wait, bro, with animations like this, I thought it would be like, I thought it was like another two years. March, they got the exact date down? It and says, yeah, I think it's a Banksy, which is a callback to the same exact soundbite from the 2018 film, the vocal cameo by Post Malone. Yeah, I think it's a Banksy. So Captain what? Stacy holds his daughter at gunpoint and she unmasks herself and the watercolor brush strokes smear down behind them. Just a cool way of showing their whole world melting. Miguel and Jess invite Gwen out of pity to Post join Malone. the Spider Society and they leave through these hexagonal portals, hexagons being a recurring shape in the MCU to show rifts through space and through dimensions. So onto Earth 1610, Brooklyn, there's a food cart for mother shuckers. I love it. We follow this spot voiced by jason schwartzman as he i bro me and daniel were in the theater it was like yo why does his voice sound familiar i have no idea who this guy is but i don't i don't know if i've heard him from something but it was just the, the way he talked i don't know his voice his mannerism seems so familiar robs the atm of a bodega as he passes the bodega register it reads game over so the spot peels off one of his oozy ink this dots to so try to good, open a bro. portal into this atm but he fails at one point he runs his own hand to the side and he hurts his knuckles <laughs> but when he finally reaches in notice how the 100 dollar bill has a Pro different room. face than benjamin franklin thought this might be director joaquin dos santos i'm not exactly sure and in addition to calling it an atm machine the spot says pin number which is also redundant since n stands for number already now miles cuts away from this to recap the past year the sequel i believe is set one year and four months after the first movie among the villains he fights appears to be the marvel villain leapfrog he says he hosted Jeopardy with categories including arachnidiums, spider sense and sensibility, the wide web world, and thwip it. We learn he endorsed baby powder, which is a callback to Peter B. Parker's advice in the first film to use baby powder to get in and out of the suit. Then he has to apologize in a YouTube video. And then we see Miles adding to his no expectations wall oh art mirror all God. of his friends from the 2018 film. I love how throughout this movie, Uncle Aaron keeps coming back and back and back just to remind us how important he is to Miles' life and set up the big twist in the final act of this movie. This fight- said, I haven't seen it yet. JK, I'm I'm leaving <laughs> with the spot causes him to be late to his parent teacher conference flying through portals in the background and catching a hilarious. goose which is a callback to when miles got stuck to two pigeons in the first movie and when they fly through a blue portal following them is another bagel the symbol of jonathan mm. owens pain and his rage toward miles i like how on jefferson's phone text history he wrote in all caps this is importage and then he tried to correct in fourth kent and then finally gets it right important miles fights with the spot on a rooftop dodging his punches and kicks at one so point fire. squeezing between a punch and a kick essentially threading the needle i love it miles pats the spot on the head and red text reads good cow because with all the spots he looks That's like a fucking stance a and then miles of the spot tumble so into the opium. foam party cafe having a literal foam party with all the suds and bubbles and that goose squawking around this is the same cafe that jefferson pointed out at the beginning of the 2018 film the one with the long line as the neighborhood was being gentrified miles returns to his brooklyn visions academy dorm room where his roommate remains Gonke lee who is miles buddy in the ultimate comics but this character in the 2018 film had all of his dialogue cut the character has now been given lines and aged up in physique and in voice i'm not your mm. guy in the chair
Are those my Jordans? I can't help it if we're the same size. Guy in the chair, a reference to Ned Leeds, Jacob Batalon's character in the MCU, being Tom Holland, Peter Parker's guy in the chair in Spider-Man Homecoming, and the character of Ned in the MCU was really just based off of Gake Lee from the Ultimate Comics. Now, Genki Lee is voiced in this movie by Peter Sohn, director of Pixar's Elemental, and is also the voice of Sox in Pixar's Lightyear, since one of the co-directors of this movie is Kent Powers, director of Pixar's Soul. I like how they just keep it in the family, even though Peter Sohn's Elemental is going to be in direct competition with the Cross the Spider-Verse in the month of June at the box office. The end of the oh, they're going to fucking lose. They, all these animators just love and respect each other. I love it. So Miles finally arrives at the parent-teacher conference, where his teacher is voiced by Rachel Dratch. Miles' grades are pretty good. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. And a B in Spanish. What? Ooh, okay. Miles. Are you trying to kill your mother? Okay. I love how Jefferson tries to place that cat-themed desk ornament back together, but he fails. The teacher's eyes just start over, but she just keeps talking anyway. It's kind of like in Iron Man 2 when Tony Stark obsesses over that thing on his desk. We learn that Miles is excelling at AP Physics because, like the MCU Peter Parker, it just helps any Spider-Man to know physics and trajectories and motion. But Miles B in Spanish is met with outrage from his Puerto Rican mother, and when she snaps, it forms a little Puerto Rican flag, yeah, like the fire. sting of his mother's snap, hits him with the full might of his Puerto Rican heritage. So Miles leaves the guidance Mira. counselor's office to rejoin his fight with the spot, which tumbles into Wilson Fisk's old Alchemex Collider site, the location of the showdown of the 2018 film, but it's now under construction with this canopy made of reflective panels, reminding me of the dome that was constructed over the Chernobyl site. Based on this pardon our mess sign, it looks like Alchemex are the ones actually cleaning it up. Maybe they're continuing to have some nefarious plans here. Like you would think the government would be like, uh, you guys aren't allowed anywhere near this so the spot explains his backstory and we see the earth for oh yeah i noticed that that the roommate was playing spider-man in the uh i saw i saw that in the theater 42 spider that bit miles but in its earth 42 reality right before it left it was going to bite <coughs> alternate miles you can see his hair in braids this is foreshadowing the miles we see in the third act of the movie the big twist telling us that in that reality it was not going to be a peter parker who got bit it was going to be a miles morales the spot reveals that he was the one who got struck with that hilarious bagel action word i love that they brought this guy back so between own being the source of spider 42 coming into 1610 and miles be the source of the bagel incident they really did create each other the spot trips and he kicks himself in the butt through a portal it looks like one of the pieces from debris from the hex tiles kind of looks like the rectangular usb drive from the first film the trip mirrors my yo that fight is gonna be crazy between them because it like it's really is personal Miles tripping on his shoelaces when he was running across the rooftop for his jump test. That is what broke the USB drive, and it kind of was the embarrassment early in his arc that motivated the rest of his story. So, similarly for the spot in this movie, his embarrassment here is really what unlocks the next stage of his hero's journey. He finds himself in this inky whole realm where all the dark matter has left his body, creating all these portals into the multiverse. The first he looks into is this classic animation universe from the 1940s with Ben Day dots. There's a woman in a black and white polka dot blouse who hits him with her purse, her blouse matching the pattern of his skin. On the cinema marquee is a movie titled The Tall Man, coming soon. Then he looks into the Lego universe, calling back Lord Miller's work on the Lego movies. This we'll come fire. back to this one. Then he drops by Chinatown of Earth 688 with Ms. Chen from Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage. What do you want? I'm robbing you because I'm a bad guy. I love how unfazed Ms. Chen is. In the brand of gum he steals, we look closely. I was, I was like, bro, she's she literally just not worried about this. Bro, they, they just did such a good job with this, man. This whole fucking film, bro. Is Brock's Venomant a reference to Eddie Brock, Venom? And this establishes Sony's Venom movies as Universe 688 and their system of organizing this. Spot looks at his hands and says- Bro, like, cause like some movies with like, when they have this multiverse and shit like that, it seemed like they'd be trying too hard to just shove as much as they can in there or like just do too much. And it don't, it don't really fit with the story. But this one is like, I, it, it makes sense. Says the power of the multiverse in the palm of my hand. A not to Doc Ock's line in Spider-Man 2 in 2004. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. They, which he echoes in Spider-Man No Way Home. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Back in the Lego verse, we see a text box, which is actually in the shape of a red Lego brick, labeling this Earth 13122. This Peter Parker is voiced by Nick Novicki. There's a Lego J. Jonah Jameson in this Daily Bugle office, and they use J.K. Simmons audio from the 2002 Sam Raimi film when he says, Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one with a decent picture this time. So back in 1610, Miles cannot thwip when he's carrying cake boxes, so he has to ride a crowded train. I don't like to Mario Peter Parker trying to beat the time in Spider-Man 2 and having to take the elevator afterward. Miles has to hop off the track to quickly zap the villain, the armadillo. And then Miles foils a thief stealing Nikes. He passes a bunch of gawkers, including this smiling dumbass with glasses. <laughs> this is an aged up version of that goofy student who smiles at Miles in the- Damn, why'd he fucking come in like that? 
be this smiling dumbass with glasses. This dumbass. is the up version of that goofy student who smiles at Miles in the Visions Academy in the first film. Miles shows up late with the cakes to the rooftop. Why he gotta be a dumbass? What, bro? He's just happy to see Spider-Man. Party having changed into his basketball jersey, number 42, Miles' number. The cakes mm. are now wrecked. His heartfelt messages spelling out just, I'm not, and then proud. Jeff and Rio complain that Genki calls them by their first name, so later when Gwen does it, they really cringe. Miles refers to his friends Peter and Gwanda using Gwen's fake name that she gave him in the first film. Miles returns to his room where boxing gloves hang by the door, again reminding us of his boxing lessons with Uncle Aaron. There's also a Michelle Obama campaign stick suggesting that in 1610 she was the Obama who held or at least sought public mm. office. Whereas before it was Sunflower, the hot track of this sequel is Hummingbird by Metro Boomin and James Blake, which Miles chills out to here. Remember, the 2018 film ended with Miles listening to Post Malone's Sunflower as Gwen opened that portal over his bed. That Sunflower song hit, 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 that, that shit hit harder. Asked if he has a minute, and this scene picks up with a similar. The music in this one, the music in this one was still so so good though. Don't get me wrong, it was so so good, but it's nothing like that. Moment just like that, but a year has passed since the events of the first film, and notice how throughout this movie, Miles has been aged up a bit. A longer yeah. face, he's a bit taller, and he has longer hair. Floating around his room is a bunch of trading cards with these red and white balls on them. These are for Teriyakimon, the 1610 version of Pokemon. And when they're sitting on the bed, floating past is a framed photo of Miles with his. Uncle Aaron, his mentor figure, who was shot by Kingpin in the 2018 film. And on Miles' shelf is an RC Spider Mobile, which 1610 Peter had a life size version of in the 2018 film. And above that, the specific photo of Miles' dad, Jefferson, and his brother, Aaron, that Jefferson had as his phone background. And this exact photo was framed in Aaron's apartment. So this is probably something Miles found in his uncle's apartment and moved to his bedroom. Also, on the shelf on the left side of frame, Miles has this wooden moose. This is actually an Easter egg for Lord and Miller's 2021 film, Mitchell's vs. Machines. This moose is a hugely important an item to the Mitchell family in that movie. Gwen finds Miles' sketchbook. That. Our man is lucky that she didn't see any of the other drawings he probably drew of her in this. But over on the left, he kept a bus ticket stub, Hudson Valley Explorers connected to Brooklyn Central. This was the bus ride home that they took after Gwen saved them from Olivia Octavius in the forest in the 2018 film. So Miles has been scrapbooking his relationship with her. Miles and Gwen swing from construction crane to construction crane, just like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man does at the climax of the 2012 Amazing Spider-Man film as they thread the needle between buses Notice how this whole block is just colored in pink and teal hues, a way of showing how Gwen's colors are tinting and shading this reality as her influence spreads throughout it. There's this mm. awesome point of view shot from the truck driver. Miles swings on the right side, reflected in both mirrors, and then we turn to the right side mirrors as he flies behind the truck, oh, and the exclamation points from his scream chase him, just like the ah from his fall in the 2018 film, and the woo in the final act. I just love how Miles stays behind Gwen throughout this whole sequence, hiding his clumsy collisions and trying to come off as more confident than he <laughs> really is really though just copying Gwen's moves like hastily tying his web to his ankle he tries to claim that he's learned just as much as she has but really he's just actively learning in this moment from her they pass the hot dog vendor and we see the action word take on the hot dog swipe but then Miles whips money to the vendor's chest if you look closely this is an alternate universe $25 bill I love this there's just a kid mm. who mindlessly licks the window of the Yo. train with a big old <laughs> smile I think he's my favorite character in this movie I can watch him on loop this is just so he was like don't do that <laughs> What the fuck is this kid? Where is his fucking parents, bro? And the delivery on that shit. Don't do that. Oh, f funny to me. Gwen plants a drone to spy <laughs> on the spot's apartment. Above it, I love this, is a billboard with a big old. Damn, bruh! Of it always all over the place. A 1610 version of the bagel themed everything everywhere all at once. This movie's animators clearly mm. acknowledging the bagel parallel with Jonathan Owen. Miles and Gwen look out at the city sitting upside down from the Williamsburg that Bank building, oh! creating such a trippy but great visual. Gwen says, In every other universe, Gwen Stacy falls for Spider Man. Yeah. And in every other universe, it doesn't end well. Not only Beautiful she scene. To Earth 65 Peter's death is usually during usually during parts like that, I'd be like, bro, come on, let's get back to the action. Let's get back to the action. But oh my gosh. I was watching this shit. I was like, yo my god, this is this is such a good scene. I think it's just like the artwork, like they were upside down and just the music in the background, because that's when the Coil Ray song was was playing too, right? Right? Wasn't it that scene? Or was it like the beat or instrumental or something? I don't know. But someone was playing that shit. Oh my god, it's just so beautiful the lizard she's also referring to the universes where gwen stacy famously dies in the death of gwen stacy arc like Damn. we saw with emma stone in the amazing spider-man yeah 2. ah back at the rooftop party miles and gwen whip some food. i will never forget that bro i will never forget that moment in theaters holy shit
food and we see a can of grape drink a nod to my oh, yeah i played in the beginning when she was walking off after the band thing my favorite dave Chappelle bit a lot of black people don't have the privilege of knowing about grape juice because they have great drink. drink. It's not the same formula. After Miles' parents scare off Gwen, we get this heartfelt moment between Miles and his mother, Rio. The city they look out on has incomplete sketch lines in the distant background for the buildings. Shout out to you for even, like, including that joke. Uh, uh, another Dave Chappelle fan? Kind of in the haze of the city. It's just a really cool detail to suggest that the Manhattan skyline is a part of New York that Miles Sorry, might not know as well because nice. really his home neighborhood is Brooklyn. Rio gives Miles the advice that he really needs for this whole film, saying that she hopes her son never lets anyone of those big fancy important mm. places he's going to be in tell him that he doesn't belong there. I think all and that relate. Hold on, all of us can relate. I was just about to say that. Let me talk, okay? Let me talk. I was just about to say that shit relates. Like that's like and that's real life shit too, bro. When you go to when you apply to a job, like don't let them make you feel like you don't belong just because like the color of your skin, how your fucking hair looks, shit like that. You could become and do whatever it is the fuck you want. That's why I fucking love this film too. Like on a dish, like each all films got like good messages and shit like that. But it's just like so much different when you can like actually relate to it in in real life. Cause this shit was real, bro. When she was talking, I was like, damn, like that shit's true. And I feel like everybody, every parent should be telling their kid that, so they're not they don't just be getting discouraged to feeling like an imposter or a mistake or told that we're not ready for the big leagues. And I think the third Spider-Verse movie will prove that Miles' anomalistic status. But what's crazy too, because even like, bro, what's his name? What's the main villain? The, or he's not, bro, he's not even really a villain. Like the nigga kind of, not the nigga right, bro. <laughs> he's right, bro. No, not the spot, not the spot. Uh, the, the, uh, Miguel, Miguel, Miguel. He just trying to, like, he's trying to fix this shit that is getting fucked up. And it looked crazy. It, it looked crazy. It may seem like, you know, he's wrong or in the wrong, but he's really just trying to do what's right for in his situation. That's why the film is just so good. I really wonder what's going to happen in third. Like, they got to all come together and stop, stop the spot, obviously. But it's like, what are we going to do about the fucking universes? Them shit's kind of fucked. This is actually the rule all spider people should live by. But it's just sad to think that this moment with Rio is the last time in this movie Miles will talk to his home reality mother. In his chat with Jeff early- Bro is hunting down a 15 year old. Yeah, but do you understand why? Nah, he's not right. So everybody, everybody sh should die. All universes should be fucked up because in his mind, he like, because Peter, uh, not Peter, because Miles wants to save one person, his father. Like you really gotta think about it in 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 in, in hindsight, like story wise, and how he's how things are happening. Earlier might be the last time he talks to his dad from any reality. It's not confirmed that will happen. Yo, you fucking dumb bitch. Okay, movie the movie, his character and his mindset. Think about his mindset. Of course we know we're watching, nigga. Think from the character's POV. This is what like movies are for. Think from there how they are speaking. Of course we know everything. We're watching the movie. <laughs> We're watching all the different characters, bro. Miles changes wardrobe as he descends a fire escape, unzipping his pants on the ground, and then seeing a dog walker and a dog, and then awkwardly reason. That's like, if you have that mindset, it's like, what's the point of going to watch movies, bro? That's like going to like uh, watching Endgame or whatever and be like, bro, like there's no point. Like, wh like what's the point, bro? Like, obviously they're gonna win. Like. Uh, we know they win. Okay, but like, like, dog, like it's a movie. Like, get into the minds of the characters or the world that 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 they live in, man. Don't like, goddamn, bro. I feel like you appreciate shit more when you think like that rather than like. I mean, obviously, like things are gonna work out because there's a third film. Like, why is he on this so hard? <laughs> why is he so infested? Like, dude, there's a third film. Like, everything's gonna be okay, buddy. <laughs> Zipping his pants back up. Okay, then to Owen's apartment. We see from photographs that he was once a long-haired and bearded colleague to live Octavius. His spider containers are labeled Earth-42. This was the spider that bit Miles, which is now deceased because Miles swatted and killed it. But there are other <laughs> containers labeled 14512, that's Penny Parker's universe, 333-90214, that is Spider-Man Noir's universe, and 19925, this is a universe supposedly written by a bot. Miles jumps in after Gwen into the portal tunnel and lands in Earth-50101, Mumbai. 
Manhattan, a cross between Mumbai and Manhattan. From above, its geography looks like the island of Manhattan, but greener. And what we think are the rivers are actually just the city's lower levels. The artist designed Manhattan to keep going down and down and down, a contrast to 1610 and Nueva York, where the city just goes up and up and up. In Manhattan, instead of the trains this running was, on top of the tracks, so fire. the cars hang below from the rail above them. Throughout Manhattan, you can I don't see know signs how, for Zomato. I don't know how they don't know who this Spider-Man is, though. Like, the dude has his hair out, man. He has his whole hair out. The restaurant group in India. And here we meet Pav. Privateer Private Car, Spider-Man India from Earth 50101 is voiced by Karen Sony, a.k.a. Dopinder from the Dead. What? That's who that was? Deadpool films. He spins his web shooter on a spindle like a yo-yo. It looks so cool. All the action words in 50101 are in Hindi. Like at one point we see thwip in Hindi. And when Privateer oh. hits the spot in the back of the head, it makes this Hindi word dadak, which translates to roughly bang or slam. And Privateer corrects Miles on the common American chai tea mix up. I love chai tea. What did you just say? Chai tea, chai means tea, bro. You're saying tea, tea. And I love how Miles is so distracted, he spills the tea. It flows from the cup onto the table. Also, you could consider this a callback to Miles correcting the spot on ATM machine, which is also redundant. The M stands for machine already. So as these three fight the spot in Manhattan, we see that his dark matter has filled in more of his body so that he's gradually going more from white to black throughout this movie. He makes it to the Manhattan mm. Alchemex lab for its collider, and Miles tries to supercharge the barrier with this new move that he's working on, but Hobie Brown arrives, Spider-Punk, voiced by Daniel Kaluuya, and yeah. he looks so cool in this movie, made up of different textures of paper for newspapers and posters but a lot of it is in the speech i saw that because i remember i was like yo his voice like who is like that and I, I literally i think me and daniel looked it up like after the movie at which he moves. In the 2018 film, remember, Miles was initially animated on twos, which means 12 frames per second instead of the normal 24 frames per second, giving him a more staggered, choppier movement. By the end of the movie, he was animated on ones to show his evolution and do smoother, more confident swings in 24 frames per second. Mm. Homie in this movie is deliberately animated, I guess you'd say on fours? It looks like six frames per second. Really, really choppy movement, but intentionally staggered. A punk rock poster come to life. I love how this reflects Hobie as a character, mm. a spider Variant who makes a choice of being out of step with the other spider people, even more grounded in his home medium than Miles was. It shows Miles that there's another way to exist in this multiverse, an arguably more powerful way, because it forced- I'm glad he was cool. I, I'm glad he ended up being like, actually cool as fuck, because I, I thought the whole time they were kind of setting him up to be like, kind of fuck over Miles. This is the viewer to look at every single pose that you strike. Hobie says, I'm not a role model. I was briefly a runway model. I hate the AM. I hate the PM. I hate labels. Yeah, hate the PM. A bit of wordplay there because wordplay is always very common in the Cockney slang. Like later we see him say Scooby-Doo, meaning clue. But by PM, yes, he's saying he hates the time of day in the afternoon, but also he hates the PM as in the prime minister. As a punk rock music scene in the UK grew out of anger largely at prime minister Margaret Thatcher. Geology is a 22 time award winning skin, hair, and body care company recognized in men's health, Oprah Daily, Hype Beast, <laughs> Birdie, Esquire, and- Damn, you said fucking transition. We just gonna get to the ad. <laughs> that shit- <laughs> That shit caught me off guard. W ad, man. You say, yo, fuck this shit. We gonna get right into it. Like you could have came up with something, man. You could have said you could have said somehow like you like his hair. Like he has a lot of hair. You know, ha hair is a hair down on your armpit or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> he just said, "Fuck it, bro." Uh, w. Rockstars 100 to get started. <laughs> the spot activates the collider, infuses with the dark matter, and Miles' consciousness briefly overlaps with Jonathan Owens. He sees the black and white future of Owens' plans to absorb all of this. This. This was like crazy. Okay, like what the fuck happened here? ...and caused the deaths of police captains with Inspector Singh, Gayatri's father, and Miles' dad, Captain Morales, flickering back and forth as they rush to save a kid. So when Miles saves Singh, in his mind, he's saving his own dad, but both are considered canon events that Miguel O'Hara wants to play out. The Alchemex building collapses, raining rubble all over the city, and the forward leap into action. Privateer sees Gayatri on a double-decker bus on the bridge, recalling MCU Peter Parker's girlfriend MJ in, in a double-decker bus on Tower Bridge in Spider-Man. See, this is the thing. Yeah, he's seeing the future. Bro, the thing is, is like, so he ruined the canon of the homie's story. And it, they said that the that universe was disappearing or imploding or something within itself. Uh, so, like, was that still happening at the at the end of this film? At the end of this film that just came out? 
or was it fixed? Okay, yeah, it's slowly dying, which means even then that should have shown if, if we're going in the mindset, okay, in the mindset of Miguel and even Miles, that should kind of prove like what happens when you fuck with Canon. And I feel like that's going to what is going to drive Miguel to go even harder because like he's seeing proof of it happening and everybody else is seeing it, too, which is probably why all the spider people were like going after Miles. But it's like, damn, like I'm not finna let my pops die. He, yo, Miles was speaking facts, but so was so was Miguel, bro. I like shit like that. I like when both both of the people is is making sense. But let's talk about Spot, man. This nigga really mad because like a nigga threw a bagel at his head. <laughs> nigga threw a bagel at his head. Uh, it's deeper than that, but yo, Spot, relax, bro. It's it's like calm down, bro. Man, far from home in the MCU, everyone ends up getting saved. It's an awesome scene, but Miles disrupting the canon event. Nah, he did. Yeah, he did ruin his life. He did. He did ruin his life. I know. I know. I know. But I, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, his his new form, like his final form at the end. Ooh, now that's a nigga. That's a nigga you, you, I don't want to fuck with. Of Inspector Singh's death causes dark matter to consume the city. Jessica Drew arrives with the team to contain it. She takes the rest back to Nueva York, Earth 928, Spider Society HQ. And I just love the reveal that initially it's all upside down with Miles and the rest on the bottom side of the elevator lift. It's an interesting directional inversion of that great moment in the 2018 film where Miles dives, but they invert the shot to make it look like so, a triumphant rise. So Here fire. it's the opposite. Miles is technically rising and going up the skyscraper, but because he's upside down, it feels like a descent into hell because this is. This whole, like, this is the best part. There's so many good parts. There's so many good parts. But I feel like this is, like, the best part of the movie. Just this whole, this whole part, bro. Not a good place where Miles is going. But, hey, we get to meet a ton of spider things. The animators say they created 280 spider people for this movie. We've already met a dozen or so. But the majority of ones in this HQ are really just non-specific variants of different shapes and suit designs. I'm just going to cover these specific references to ones known from the comics and other media. So as they arrive, we meet Malala Windsor, Spider UK from Earth 835. She's voiced by Sophia Barclay. She says, anyone spot the spot? And Jess gets annoyed and asks if anyone else's jokes and we see yellow text boxes showing everyone else's jokes say spot run x marks the weird looking bad guy did you say quip or thwip we need to run a spot check he could be in any hole in the world puns are my weak spot he's probably hiding in some hole in the wall hey way to put us on the spot mate this search is starting to peter out i hate it and as the camera glides through the main hall of the hq we pass the black and yellow spider armor mark ii sitting on the left there then a steampunky looking one with these extra appendages this is Maybell Riley, Lady mm. Spider from Earth 803. There's a traffic cop Spider-Man. And then there's a bombastic bag man. We'll talk Make about him bombastic. a little bit later. Then on the walkway, Miles passes the Spider Armor Mark III. And then they pass Peter Parked Car of mm -hmm. Earth 5391. Wow, Peter Parked Car. And then dropping car. into him, Spider Side car. of Earth 616. That's so this is stupid. a thick boy clone of 616 Peter. Also, the last stand Peter Parker of Earth 312500. Is that blood? This is the Peter with the high collar jacket who gets killed in the last stand run and exists alongside Ezekiel Sims. Oh. Then Peter of Earth 13122. That's the Lego universe that we saw earlier. You can actually see the little Lego man sitting on top of the windshield there. And then Oh, wait, he's the size of a Lego. Wait, in that universe, there's si they're the size of Legos? <laughs> I don't know why I thought they were like regular sized. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, that makes it even more funnier when Miguel's like, uh, you're our best one. You're our best guy, Spider-Man, or whatever the fuck he says. You guys said it early, but I already forgot. And Tarantula of Earth 1610A, <laughs> 16A being a side universe to Miles' universe. Of like, he's a, like he's talking to a child or, or saying, yeah, you're one of our best. <laughs> then they meet the moody and dramatic Ben Ryan. Okay, what the fuck was this? This shit was hilarious, but it's like, I, I didn't know if I was like, if this was supposed to be from something where, I, like, if I'm supposed to know what this is from, or if this is just how this character is, like, for this film. Because I was like, what? What is wrong with him? Lee Spider-Man, aka the Scarlet Spider from Earth 94, voiced by Andy Samberg. It's mentioned here that he's a clone because yes, he is from the Clone Saga, and yes, he's got a lot of baggage. Then they meet the Web Slinger, a cowboy Spider-Man from Earth 31913. He was so voiced dramatic, bro. And his horse Widow, who's also in a mask. Lila takes him on the tour of all the multiversal anomaly villains who have been captured. She mentions several Doc Ox, a Moosterio, also a Mysterio, and then a video game guy section. And yeah. Between them is the Insomni 
they ask Spider-Man? Fire. Earth 1048. That's the universe of the PS4 games. That's crazy. They asks, are you talking to me? And it's the voice of Yuri Lowenthal, who voices Peter in those Insomniac games. There's an interesting villain named Typeface who says, wow. go to Helvetica. In the 2018 movie, they changed all the New York City public transit signs That's from so the Helvetica fire. typeface that it's in in the real world to Ariel, which Microsoft introduced in the early 90s as an alternative to Helvetica. So this might just be an inside joke with these animators. They might just really hate Helvetica and prefer Ariel. And I can tell you as someone who writes all my scripts in Ariel for YouTube, Ariel is much nicer because it takes up less space on the page. So that might be it. Mm. Then Lila mentions an interesting Craven, a boring rhino, and then, oh my God, a Prowler, a cameo by Donald Glover Yo. in live action. Hobie claims he was the one who caught him himself. And Glover says, I slipped. Remember, Glover played Aaron Davis in the yeah. live action MCU in Spider-Man Homecoming in 2017. And in that movie, he referenced having a nephew who lives in that area. I remember, I remember, I remember hearing the gas in the theater when this happened. But that's crazy. And so the live action, is the live action film going to be like in this like universe? Or is this just a whole nother separate thing? Yes, no, no, yes. Who knows? Different universe. We don't know. Oh, so, oh, we don't know yet. Wait, where y'all hear where y'all hear about this from? Or is this like announced somewhere? I don't know. Y'all just be finding shit on sites and shit. I don't even know where y'all be getting y'all information from. How would we know, bud? Y'all be knowing y'all just be knowing, bro. And in a deleted scene, calls him Miles. Glover also cameoed in the 2018 Spider-Verse film from his scene in NBC's Community when Troy wears Spider-Man PJs. It's possible that this could be the same Aaron from the MCU just years after Homecoming. It is just wild to see a live-action character sharing the screen with animated ones yeah. like Mary Poppins or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that W reference. Increases the likelihood that this series in the next movie may introduce a live-action Miles. Beyond the Spider-Verse. Beyond the Spider-Verse. Across the Spider-Verse. We were in the Spider-Verse. Beyond the Spider-Verse. What the fuck does that mean? Miles Morales, who will be in the MCU and in the Sony-verse. Miles meets Margot Kess, aka Spider-Bite from Earth-221. I ain't gonna lie. Like, they was, like, low-key flirting throughout the film. Like, what the fuck was these googly eyes? They, they kept looking at each other, like... Nine one, voiced by Amanda Stenberg. She is a digital avatar in her physical bite from Earth two two one nine one, voiced by Amanda. Lest Where is she from? What is she in? She bad. Answer the question. Hunger Games is that? The hate you give. Okay, I was like, bro, why does she look familiar? The hate you give. That's what it is. Stenberg. She is a digital avatar and her physical body is back at home where she has a poster. We are incognito with a Guy Fox logo, uh, an alternate version of the hacker group Anonymous. All these anomalies are sent to the go home machine, which comes back later. But Margo states here that it's based on DNA, which is important. On their way in to see Miguel, Hobie rips a piece. They was low key fucking with each other. I ain't gonna lie. Piece of tech out of the wall, joking, I bet this doesn't do anything. But it sets up how later he's able to engineer his own multiverse watch for Gwen to use. Like notice as they continue to walk through, he keeps swiping more and more stuff to use for it. Around Miguel's lab are futuristic versions of tech from villains Miguel has defeated by the year 2099, including the claw of a prowler, the arms of Doc Ock, and the glider of Green Goblin, showing how he- Exactly, she could have stopped Miles too. She was like, shit, that dick probably go crazy. I don't know what happened. He, 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 he went away. I thought, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I thought she was about to get, I thought something was about to happen to her, bro. <laughs> I for sure thought Miguel was about to check her, but luckily we, he didn't know what the fuck happened. He must use scraps of their tech to continue building his technology. Miles tries to connect with Miguel, offering him empanadas, but Miguel throws the food back in his face and he responds in a curt, more technical Spanish than Miles folksier Puerto Rican Brooklyn slang. Peter B. Parker returns yes! along with his new baby daughter, yes! Mayday Parker, who has a baby day pass, telling us w. that Jessica Drew gave Miles a wristband that's normally for babies. So Miguel launches into his big explanation, first depicting all of reality as a glowing white vine with branches, imagery that I think is made to look just like the 60s 
sacred timeline of the MCU, which mm. split into a multiverse at the end of Loki and is now a messy web, last seen in the post credit scene of Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. It's clear that this movie is trying to establish the animated Spider-Verse as part of the live action Marvel multiverse from the MCU. But over this white vine, straight red lasers beam out to represent the Spider-Verse. Miguel O'Hara refers to this as the web of life and destiny, which is the term in the comics, or as he says here, arachno-humanoid poly multiverse. The nodes represent canon events, and in the first one we see six different comics moments when a spider bite occurred, including an early one where Peter is wearing the yellow vest. Behind that to the right are various moments Peter and MJ connect, including Kirsten Dunst, Mary Jane, yeah, Pete and Tobey Maguire, and Peter in the rain from the 2002 film. Then to the left, the next nodes that Miguel refers to as very, very bad, shows six moments the Venom symbiote overtook Eddie Brock in the comics. It's fascinating that Miguel categorizes the creation of Venom as a canon event in the life of every spider person. To me, this kind of feels like Sony's trying to make Venom as important as possible to their Spider-Verse franchise, which also would be kind of weird because their two Venom movies so far removed the Spider-Man step from the Venom origin. But going forward, the implication here seems to be that every Peter, Miles, Gwen, or whoever- I ain't gonna lie, Venom didn't even feel like one of those like Marvel or like, you know, type movies. I don't know. It just felt like a different movie with like an alien or something will spawn a symbiote and rich rival that will plague their lives. Then Miguel takes us through what I'm gonna call Death Alley, all the mentor figures that the spider people have lost. Miles sees a projection of his loss of Uncle Aaron from the first film, and Miguel singles out what he calls Event ASM 90, which is a nod to The Amazing Spider-Man number 90, in which George J.C. goes to save a kid. We actually see the same comics art of those panels here during Spider-Man's fight with Doc Ock that ends up taking George's life. I believe it's 31 issues after this, Amazing Spider-Man 121, that is the death of Gwen Stacy, his daughter. Miles turns over to a parallel moment, a projection of Andrew freaking- Bro, the second, I'm not gonna lie. The the second one, the, the second Venom was forgettable. Literally, the only thing I remember was that um, Venom was in a gay bar talking about how people should be themselves, and then the very ending uh, with the, like, the multiverse thing. Fucking Garfield, Peter Parker, crying over the body of Dennis Leary, Captain Stacy from 2012's yeah. Amazing Spider-Man film when George was killed by Reese Siphon's version of the lizard, Dr. Connors. And again, since all these Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield moments connect to the MCU by association, this animated Spider-Man film is giving us a codified understanding of how the Spider-Verse is all connected, including to the MCU. Miguel confesses that he tried to bypass a canon event of his variant's death in a reality so that he could be happy in a reality with his daughter Gabriella, but eventually that reality erased around him. This may remind you of the logic of what's called absolute absolute points in What If Episode 4 over in the Marvel world, but it just sounds like different terms for the same kind of idea. Peter B. Parker explains the necessary loss of Uncle Ben, and in one node portal we see Cliff Roberts and Uncle Ben dying from the 2002 Sam Raimi film until- I actually enjoy Gwen's tight super spider suit. Who? Who was talking about that? <laughs> there was no conversation about that. McGuire, Peter Parker crying <laughs> over him, which is the right of that. Uh, me personally, I actually enjoyed it. Like, what? is the animated spectacular Spider-Man, the one voiced by Josh Keaton in the moment his Uncle Ben died. I'm not gonna lie, when this little nigga came out and said whatever the fuck he said, I could not take him serious. <laughs> I was like, bro, shut up. The right of that is the animated spectacular Spider-Man, the one voiced by Josh Keaton in the moment his Uncle Ben died. And then on the far right is Uncle Ben's death from the cutscene of the PS4 game. Josh Keaton actually joins the other spider people in this intervention saying, I know it's hard, but it's the truth, Miles. <laughs> I could not take him serious. I know it's hard. Respect my goat. I'm sorry, but it was just, it was just so funny. Like I couldn't take him serious. He was just so, so tiny, man. When Miguel traps Miles in this red energy field, Hoopy holds out his hand's palms. Goaded, bro. Calling back his advice to Miles back in Mumbatton to use the palms instead of the fingertips. And so when Miles listens to him and blasts out of the cage and all the other spiders. Oh. The palms instead of the fingertips. And so when Miles listens to him and blasts out of the cage and all the other spider people mm. chase after him, Hobie's like, nah, I'm out. And he leaves back through a portal and tosses his watch behind. I'm telling you, as we look ahead to Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, Hobie Brown is a very important character and a potential mentor to Miles Morales that none of the other characters are. So Miguel alerts the Spider mm. Society. In this cafeteria, one of them's reading a newspaper with an opinion page headline, Are Cats Man's Best Friend? They all break into groups of three, recreating the pointing meme from the post credit scene of the 2018 film, which of course was repeated in the live action Spider-Man No Way Home. I just love the idea that three is kind of a magic number for these spider so people fire. to stump them into confusion like this. The group closest to us includes the white logo PS4 game Advanced Suit Spider-Man, and next to him is Spider-Man Unlimited from the late 90s animated series. And then entering Sector 4 is this dude. <laughs> what, I got, I got webbing on my face? Oh my gosh, this part is so fire, man. Do I, uh...
Cap Web on my face. What's the deal? This is Spider Man 2211, aka Max Born from Earth 9500, an associate of Miguel O'Hara in the 90s comics. And Miles clings to his back, kind of like Aladdin does with that bodybuilder when he flees the guards in the chase sequence of that movie. That'd he be falls down and they're piling on to him like white blood cells. Look at this shit. Definitely the Yo, great... y'all have to see this in theaters. If you have not seen the movie, like, even if you've seen this and you haven't seen the movie, but you're like, fuck it, I'm just going to watch this. Watch the movie. I'm telling you, the way the sound is, the way the music is, the sound, like, everything in theaters just hits so much better, bro. Especially, especially during this part with the fucking T-Rex, bro. What the fuck? The armored spider armor mark one and then spider cat who coughs up a web <laughs> furball on his face and notice how spider cat's gizmo is latched to its tail that miles says this ain't any damn winner which is a callback to peter b parker when they meet the other three eccentric spider people in the 2018 film this could literally not get any weirder it can get weirder and then there's pater Patarker, aka Spider Rex, when he whips, it's T Whip. Miles gets hit by Chibi Spider Man, the really small one, and then by Spider Monkey. Then the what? Wrestlinger, Cowboy Spider Man see that from one. the Wild West universe in the Ultimate Animated series. He fires bullets from his revolver. Miles and Web Slinger end up in a Clint Eastwood style duel. The frame goes to a 293 to 1 aspect ratio like it does in Westerns, and Miles gets a quick draw with a whip. And then we get this moment. And then I looked at my uncle and. Uh, go to the moment, go to the moment, and uh, during this part, this shit was funny. Hey, you didn't wait. You didn't wait for the countdown. Ugh. It's a quick draw with a whip. And then we get this moment. And then I looked at my uncle and. Uh, let me guess. He died. Oh my God. I love it. On the walls of this therapy oh, office is an so inkblot far. test that naturally to us and to all these characters like looks like a spider. There's also a diploma from Ditko University, a nod to Spider-Man co-creator, Steve Ditko. And it names this therapist Spider-Man Ezekiel Sims, who is the old man Spider-Man from the comics. So since he's the oldest of them, he probably is the wisest and has the most therapy to wisdom. like Wolverine or something. Peter B. Parker asks Miguel to take a photo of he and Mayday's first chase together. Miguel blows him off, but Mayday whips the button of the phone to take the selfie. During the chase, Miles slides into the legs of Flash Thompson Spider-Man, a.k.a. Captain Spider. He wears the Letterman jacket. Mm -hmm. Miles swings ahead of the bombastic Bagman. This is from the comics when Peter gets stuck in the Fantastic Four's Baxter building and has to borrow one of their suits and wears a brown paper bag over his head to disguise himself. Mm. When Miles twists the bag around on his head, you can see the CMYK Bende dots in his outline staying the same size. We also, of course, wow. see Spider-Man from the Mangaverse. Miles pushes him away. Oh, Miles shit. gallops on the horse Widow past the anomalies who cheer him on while booing Miguel and the others. Miles takes Web Slinger's hat and stuffs it in the Bro. face of Spider Wolf. Then Miles passes Charlotte Weber, the Sun Spider, who has Ehlers Danlos syndrome that affects her joints and connective tissues, so she uses a wheelchair and crutches. She's voiced by Danielle Perez, the 1967 oh, Spider-Man from the <laughs> this show was so funny. animated series returns from the 2018 movie post credit scene, voiced by Yorma Tacone. And then Miles runs through a kind of danger room with past villains, the Sinister Six from the 90s animated series. We see Doc Ock, Shocker, Goblin, and the rest. Then Miles dives out of the skyscraper. Oh my God, what a beautiful shot, woman shot, by the way. Along with a Canadian Spider-Woman with a hockey stick that should be Spider-Man rides. Miles drops in the underworld of Nueva York, and Peter B. Parker tries to get him to hold Mayday, saying Miles is the reason he had a kid. Reminds us of that moment in the 2018 film when, remember, Peter B. Parker had split up. <laughs> I can do anything he can. Ah, crap. Up with his MJ because he didn't want to have kids, but upon meeting Miles and seeing him kick ass, he realized, oh yeah, the Metro Boomin. The Metro Boomin shit. Wait, do I want kids now? Miguel chases Miles on the- He said this long ass video should have been muted and I finished the whole damn book. We almost done, bro. We're literally almost done. Skybound bullet train, an incredibly animated fight. At one point in Miguel's lunge, a frame flashes from an animated storyboard cell, including some artist notes, Imperial Violet and Crimson Red. This is what instructs the artist which ink color to fill in the this character so with. Fire. These shades are the specific shades of the red and indigo for Miguel's suit. You'll notice mm. these kind of lines and notes often hover around Miguel and his tech. I just love how it hints at Miguel at being a tech head and a control freak, constantly trying to upgrade and upkeep his own animation as he repeatedly has- Oh shit, there's a part two to re replug his techno organic suit. This is what Miles uses against Miguel here, placing his palm on his shoulder, overloading the suit, giving him a classic, hey, and then revealing he intentionally lured all the spider people high above the city so that he could just leap off the train back to the base. Peter B. Parker says, I did teach him that, so I feel like a pretty good mentor. I referring a, to when Peter B. Parker a fire in shot too. film just jumped off the ledge and fell into the collider beam so that he could go home. Miles goes invisible and sneaks past Margot. He scans his DNA and briefly can see the scan reading Earth 42 since it reads nah, the DNA of the spider I'm do my that own thing. So the go home machine goes to work. It's a robot in the shape of a spider wrapping Miles up in a web of lasers. Miguel tries to pry in, but when given the option to reboot the system, 
system, Margo decides at the last second to just let Miles go home. So Miles tumbles into this w red and Brooklyn where it rains. Well, it's a color scheme that we haven't seen before, so it kind of hits us as really eerie and off, but it bears a similar palette to the 1610 universe that Miguel, Ben Riley, and Jess go to, making this a really effective visual fake out. Back in 616. That shit threw me all the way off. B, Peter and MJ put Mayday to bed, and MJ says there's no playbook on being a parent, you just have to make adjustments at halftime. Which feels like a meta nod to this story's two-part structure, Across the Spider-Verse ends at halftime, Beyond the Spider-Verse being the second half, where Peter and Gwen now have to make adjustments and put some new players on the field. Captain Stacy tells his daughter Gwen that he's quitting being a cop, and he gives her the gadget that Hobie built using text stolen from Miguel. On the screen it reads, Project Bootleg, and for the strap, he used a Union Jack pattern band. So Miles swings through Times Square, where all of his villains, past and present, are haunting him, we see the giant hands of the spot reaching out to him. But in Times Square, if you look closely, you see W and W's instead of M and M's and Soka Coca, which is a giveaway that this is not 1610. Because remember in his universe, it's Coca Soda instead of Coca-Cola. Ben Riley can't- Who the fuck would remember that? Come on. Comes out outside Miles' room in 1610, but Gwen takes him out. And this is right as we see Miles arriving home. So we naturally just assume it's the same universe. I love when movies do this. Like my favorite example is Silence of the Lambs. When you think Clarice Styling and the rest of the FBI are at the same house, but then you realize the raid is happening at the wrong place and Clarice is at Buffalo Bill's house by herself. This also happens in the Fellowship of the Ring when you think the ring wraiths are about to stab the hobbits in their beds, but they're actually across the street. Yeah. It always works on me. And yeah. the way they tease this out is so well, well done. Supposed Rio to. asks Miles why he changed his hair. Bro, this is like, I literally, I still didn't, at this point, I still didn't put two and two together. I was like, I was like, maybe she didn't, I thought she just didn't watch the news or something. So she didn't know who Spider-Man was. And I thought that was like the joke. I thought it was a joke like, she don't watch the news or like da da da. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't remember giving him any advice. Miles though. Had but then it kept going. <laughs> it kept going. I was like, huh? <laughs> Wait, what? It's a speed bag by his door now, as in Earth 42, Miles would be more of an aggressive fighter. Also, Earth 42, Miles' room has less toys and posters and more stuff in milk crates. Around the house, there aren't really that many photos of Jeff Morales, just the mother and the son, because it would have been too painful to have too many photos of him around. Miles reveals himself as Spider-Man, but Rio doesn't know who it is. And for a second, we're just like, oh, she's just a mom who doesn't really get it. But no, there is no Spider-Man in this universe. Miles demonstrates such so a sad little whip whip question mark and there's a great match cut with gwen standing on the ceiling of miles empty room in yeah. 1610 cut to miles in earth 42 with his mom and miles finally figures it out and it hits us like a hammer uncle aaron walks through the door having never died in this dimension because there's no spider-man and they go to the rooftop the city is plagued with crime on fire and the worst gut punch the rooftop mural in place of the aaron memorial now has a memorial for jeff morales bro and it's just the music the tone and the shading like the colors and shit i was just like huh in the upper corners of that mural, Pichelli and Bendis, or Sarah Pichelli and Brian Michael Bendis, creators of the Miles Morales character. Miles gets KO'd by his alternate Bendis, what? or Sarah Pichelli and Brian Michael Bendis, creators of the Miles Morales character. Oh, Miles gets KO'd by his alternate Prowler self before he sees it coming. His spider sense never went off, maybe because he can't sense himself, especially if that variant self doesn't have spider powers. Miles wakes up tied to Aaron's punching bag, the same one that he used to work out on in the 2018 film, and the one Miles tied Peter B. Parker to. Aaron puts on an album, mm. Ain't No Love, by A Lion Unleashed, featuring Bobby Blue Band. Aaron punches a bag, releasing a blast of CMYK dots, like all the ink was slammed out of it. We briefly hear the voice of J.K. Simmons, J. Jonah Jameson, reporting crime from the TV as a younger prowler steps forward, Miles G. Morales, whose hair is braided, the same one we saw back in the Damn. spot's backstory of the spider that what left Earth fuck? 42. Our Miles' face is lit red on one side, blue on the other, mixing in the middle as prowler purple. His fingertip manages to produce a small spark on the chain, but he doesn't have his full palm free. Meanwhile, Gwen reunites with Peter B. Parker in Mayday as we hear her drum solo returning. Oh, this one I was in the theater. I was like, oh shit. Like, shit, it's about to go up. How though? <laughs> like, how are they gonna squeeze all this in? In the opening minutes, and we see the new band that she has put together, including Quinn, Peter B. Parker, Mayday, Hobie Brown, Privateer Prevacar, Margo Cass Spider Bite, and returning from the first film, but not saying anything, Penny Parker, Spider Ham, and Spider Man Noir. And we end with Gwen asking us the line, You want in? This explains why the film opened the way it did. From Gwen's point of view, a third person account on what Miles went through, telling us why she quit her band, saying, Let's do things differently this time, and why the opening images included things that happened. 
miles throughout the film. This was all Gwen's sales pitch, her recruiting mission, what she said to every single one of these spider people to get her to join her team, to join this rescue mission, and this brave step to defy the spider society. So yeah, we want in, and go ahead and take my money for Spider-Man mm. Beyond the Spider-Verse next year. Holy shit, what a cliffhanger, and what a What film. a cliffhanger. Please support our growing network with a Miles that's Morales it. multiverse that's it. Piss dive me shirt off, man. at nerdriot.shop. Subscribe to the way, Deep though. Dive channel for deeper dives into the Spider-Verse this I week. I cannot believe that shit, bro. subscribe to our channel, The Break Room. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstar. Subscribe oh to New Rockstar for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. I can't believe that shit. Is it this? 50 more Easter eggs? Is it this one? Welcome back to New Rockstar. Wait. Yes. I'm just like looking at their their other wait. Oh, trailer breakdown. I was, like, I was about to say the movie ain't even out yet. The fuck? The movie ain't even out yet. Top right. Top right. This one. I just asked. I just asked. I was like, 50 more Easter eggs? And y'all said, no. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss, and I know, I hey. know, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse included Miles' roommate, Genki Lee, playing the real-life upcoming Spider-Man 2 game. It's one of 50 <laughs> additional details in Easter Lee playing the real-life upcoming Spider-Man. Oh, that was probably the... He, pro he was probably getting a whole flood of comments like, that one, did you know that's on the Like, yo, nigga, I know. Damn, like, get off my dick, bitch. Two game. It's <laughs> one of 50 additional details in Easter eggs I did not include in my massive breakdown of the film that I am now going to share with you after yet another rewatch of this amazing film. Spoiler warning, and let's do this one last time. But real quick, I did break down the 2018 film. Did you know a 14-year-old animated the Lego scene? Cap. For dozens of new details, and I hosted a live stream of Across the Spider-Verse on the Deep Dive channel. Subscribe and support us with a Miles Morales Multiverse Dive shirt at nerdriot.shop. In case you missed it, New Rock Stars isn't just one channel anymore, it's three. And then that's when I ask, how y'all know? Y'all gonna be like, I don't know. <laughs> Earlier this year, we launched the Deep Dive, where I dig into the deeper meaning behind everything you love. And our newest channel, The Break Room, is where all of your nerdy friends are going to hang out online. It's also the new home for Inside Marvel. And all... It was posted? That's crazy of our reactions to the latest trailers tv shows and movies we've got so many cool videos planned so head on over and That's subscribe fire that they did and that while you're at it don't forget to subscribe to the new rock stars main channel and the deep dive okay the opening frames of the film actually have a red graffiti word cough flash in the lower right corner this is a running joke with lord and miller films since 22 jump street when a cough was audible in the opening seconds and they added a cough to the 2018 <laughs> into the spider-verse film if you listen closely detail number two a dolphin sound effect can be heard over the lord and miller logo another running joke from these guys from clone high when they put that sound effect in everything the lego movie and yes the opening cards of the 2018 spider-verse film detail what? three one of the shirts earth 65 peter wears along with that halloween lizard costume is the same polo that peter parker wears in the 90s animated series That's detail four in miles recap he talks about a big Baby Powder sponsorship deal, which is a callback to Peter B. Parker in the 2018 film recommending Baby Powder in the suit. And we see Miles' YouTube apology video. It gets 11 million. <laughs> what? This is literally how it'd be. Imagine, da imagine downvoting fucking Spider-Man. You are out of your goddamn mind. I'm not buying this shit. Yo. A dollar a week just to read words on the fucking internet? Million views, yet somehow 69 million downvotes. 69. <laughs> and this comment, I heard it was made from actual babies, though, for real. Detail yeah. 5. In Miles' fantasy, when he reveals himself to his parents, I love how they throw the couch in the air and it never comes back down because it's a fantasy. Detail 6. Bagels are everywhere in this movie, reflecting their importance to the spot's origin from the 2018 Bagel. movie. That amazing <laughs> moment. And of course, the everything everywhere all at once, everything bagel symbol. But bagels are also in the pastry case in the bodega. A bagel also follows Miles and Jonathan Owen through a portal. And 
and in the Spider Society cafeteria, a lot of people are eating bagels. Detail number seven, in the ATM, the $100 bills are not Benjamin Franklin's. I now realize they're actually Alan Hawkins, Sony's animation supervisor. Detail eight, oh, Brown's wow. dad was named Jeff Davis in the 2018 movie and in the comics, but if you look at his badge in this movie, they have updated his name to Jeff Morales, meaning he took his wife's surname. Now the comics go into why mm. Jeff and Rio decide to give Miles Rio's surname of Morales. Basically, Jeff didn't want Miles to have his father's last name. Detail mm. nine, when Miles is late, Jeff says, I see bubbles on the phone, referring to the three dots on the text feed, but it's also literally the soap suds that Miles is covered in in this moment. Detail 10, when Miles returns to his dorm room, he waits for pigeons to fly past like a jogger waiting for traffic at an intersection, showing how Miles has learned after running into pigeons and sticking to all of them in the first movie. That's Detail fire. 11, yes, Genki Lee is playing the Spider-Man 2 upcoming video game when Miles enters the room. That lucky kid gets the game early. 12, on Genki's wall is a poster for soccer player Hyung Min Sun, known for doing a Spider-Man celebration whenever he scores. He's also apparently friends with Tom Holland. 13, the Miles fuck? jokes about buying two cakes as kind of a life hack, but buying two cakes later screws him over because he can't thwip with both of them in his hands. Just a fun way of showing Miles trying to juggle two parts of his life. 14, when Jeff follows Miles one. and Spot to the Alchemix site, he faces a leap of faith into a portal, but then he wasses takes out the and takes the stairs, just hilarious. like Miles initially did with his jump test in the 2018 film. 15, the Spot. Bro, I'm surprised. There's a, there, bro, that, that remind me of, uh, hold on. I know y'all know. Ow, shit, what was it? Hold on. Ow. <laughs> y'all remember this? This is, this is the first thing I thought of. It's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> I'm surprised he ain't bringing this up. He been having some crazy references that I'd be thinking of. Lee, hold up! Oh hell! <laughs> Lee, I'm taking the staff. <laughs> oh hell no! Nah. Jeff follows Miles and Spot to the Alchemix site. He faces a leap of faith into a portal, but then he wusses out and takes the stairs, just like Miles initially did with his jump test in the 2018 film. 15, mm -hmm. the spot reveals that the number 42 spider came from an alternate dimension, Earth 42. And I love how they foreshadowed this in the first movie by having the spider glitch in that movie because the spider was in the wrong reality. 16, for the spot's oh. design, VFX supervisor Mike Lasker said that as the spot evolves throughout the movie, his ink spots get more and more active and busier, and they have just more personality as they pop off his body. 17, when Miles swings with Gwen, Okay, no, like that's when you gotta applaud like writers and shit like that who actually like sat down and wrote shit uh, for the whole three films. Like they didn't just make the movie and then like, okay, we'll figure out what to do like in the second one. They, from the very jump, they knew what they were trying to do. What the fuck? That's like... He says... Oh, he's like a ninja vampire Spider-Man, but a good guy? A vampire good guy. I'd pay good money to see that. He says... A vampire good guy. That's I paid good, good money to see that. Amanda nod to Morbius. Good guy vampire that Sony hoped we'd pay good money to see. Twice. 18. Miles tells my favorite character in the movie to stop licking the window. And it's kind of a callback to when he put his mouth on Aaron's window back in 2018. <laughs> 19. When we first see the spot's apartment beneath that everything ever all at once reference billboard is a sign. 1917-1610. That's crazy. Like, I think, I, I feel like more... Cause imagine, obviously this, this would be, it would be way, way, way too much. It would be way too much to do. But imagine if it was like that for like the Marvel universe. If from the very first Iron Man film, like they knew, like they, they just had stuff in there leading up all the way until end game. That would be crazy. But obviously I don't think they had no idea it was going to get like that big. And it would be too much to try to keep track of. But I think they started doing it once they realized the traction they were having. But for this, they they I guess they knew they already knew they were going to have three movies. So to be able to start from the first film and already know what they were doing, it's kind of like with God of War, too. Like they already knew what they were doing. So they already included shit in the first like the first uh 616 game. 1610 miles universe 616. I just like shit like that when you can go back and watch the first film and be like, oh, shit. I just noticed this from that. Da da da.
in Marvel Universe, 1917, I don't know, maybe not to the same Mendes movie. 20, in my favorite shot of the movie, Gwen walks upside down on that bank building mm -hmm. and the sunset flare disappears and then reappears upon the rotation. It's so beautifully designed, Bro. everything in the scene. 21, another detail here, Gwen and Miles sit upside down by whipping the underside of the overhang and then as they sit, their hands and legs must be sticky. They got sticky butts. 22, as they hang upside down, you can see gravity tugging their eyebrows, their cheeks and their foreheads up. 22, as they hang and then as they sit, their hands and legs must be sticky. They got sticky butts. 22, <laughs> as they hang upside down, you can see gravity tugging their eyebrows, oh their cheeks, God. and their foreheads upward. Mm -hmm. 23, on the way to Jonathan Oates' place, there butts. is a sign in the background, soda, it's a generic brand. 24, Pavitra Prabhakar's acrobatic movement and the way he flattens his feet as he moves is based on, and I'm gonna mispronounce this, I'm so sorry, Kalari Payatu? It's a 2,000 year old martial art from the Indian region of Kerala. One of the oldest known martial arts still practiced in the present day. On Damn! I had already talked about how Hobie Brown's body that moving crazy. With a lower frame rate, but it's actually different parts of his body. Like his body was animated on threes with his vest slightly offset. His guitar is animated on fours so that we see each individual part of him strumming it as a rock star pose. And his general outline is actually animated on twos the way Miles was at the beginning of the 2018 film. So they separated different parts of his body for an overall anarchic punk rock aesthetic. June is when what? summer heats up. And if you want to keep cool, I, minimize I your time in the kitchen with Factor. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready I I don't even know what that means. But that character's cool as fuck. In two minutes, so you can factor, see factor, 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 like factor. Cheddar egg. Also, since we're talking about that, since we're doing ads, um, oh, well, I can't find it, but my YouTube's, my YouTube's is out in, 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 in stores. Link in the comments. Link in the comments. Where did I put it? Bites and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillets. Hassle free bacon in the mail? It's a dream come true! What? And now Factor offers gourmet plus meals as part of your weekly options. Gourmet sides include premium produce like broccoli and broccolini that perfectly complement your gourmet. I tell you from personal experience that even after reheating the steak, it's so good. It's not dry. It's not tough. It's just good. Yo, this I'm month, I got creamy Parmesan chicken. It was so yummy. So head on over to factor75.com or. You know, they wanted me to like, they were like, uh, they were like, with HelloFresh, they were like, yeah, uh, you can do this. Da, da, da. And if they want, you can even cook something on stream. And I was like, no, I'll just show them the box. <laughs> I'll just show them what comes in the box. <laughs> they like tried to make it exciting. They're like, yeah, and if you want, you can even have like a cooking stream and show them your steps. I was like, I think I'll just show them the ingredients. <laughs> Click the link below and use the code ROCKSTAR. Nice try, but I'm not cooking anything. Cars 50 to get 50 Shout out to HelloFresh though. Love their, box. love their, Once love their Once again, that's factor75.com and use code ROCKSTARS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. 26, in Nueva York, beside the PS4 Spidey, is the Green Goblin from the 1982 Spider-Man Atari Ew! game. 27, as Hobie steals stuff from around Miguel's lab. In the background, Miguel is actually building his red and white 2099 suit from the game. 28, when Miles explains canon events in the notes for the Venom event, one of the wedges is actually Tobey Maguire Peter Parker when he pulled the symbiote oh, himself shit. in the 2007 film. 29, Canadian Spider-Woman. According to production designer Patrick O'Keefe, they got her look from the 1972 Summit series Hockey Jersey. 30, one of the Spideys who chases Miles is the Spider-Man popsicle that we saw at the beginning of the first movie. 31, in that cafe. Uh, what the fuck does that even mean? Here's another Easter egg. Oh, I should probably not have this. Okay. Fun fact. When Miles' uh, spider sense connects with 1610's Pete's, you can see the Prowler's cut. What? Ooh. Yo, that mute, that theme, that Prowler theme, it was the Prowler's theme, right? In the first one, that. Cafeteria, they also serve Miguel O'Hara branded hamburgers. 32, 1967 Spider-Man tries to grab Miles, but he misses him. Why? Because 67 Spidey is in 2D animation and he flies right past him. 33, composer Metro Boomin cameos as one of the spider people. There's nowhere to run. My bad, everybody. There was somewhere to run. 34, also some of the Spideys That's are fire. based on- I know that had to feel good. Y'all seen his reaction to that? Vintage Mexican wrestler toys. 35, the 90s animated Sinister Six in the training room. We already talked about, but the Doc Ock says, hello, Peter, which Mr. is audio Burman, of Alfred Molina's Doc Ock in Spider-Man No Way Home. Home. 36, on the train as it flies towards the moon. He was so happy, bro. How, how can you not? Not only is like you were appearing in a movie, you're appearing in a fire ass movie. Holy shit. 
suits. And for a frame, you can see his DIY suit from the first movie bought from Stan Lee's costume shop. 37, when Miles swings through Earth 42, there are some Sinister Six cartel red flags. If you look closely, signs for Vulture Telecom and Electro 2G cell service. And then on the rooftop later, signs for Hammerhead and Scorpo, mm. which might be an alternate universe, Oz Corp. 38, W&W's alternate M&Ms also have the colors reversed from the normal colors of the regular versus peanut ones. 39, instead of Forever 21, there's Never 21. Oh. How low is the life expectancy of this place? 40, when Peter B. Parker puts Mayday to sleep, she wears spider ham pajamas. 41, oh. when Gwen goes to get Peter B. Parker, her wrist gadget reads 616B, a retcon from the first movie that labeled his universe just 616 because they don't want to say it is the main 616. 42, Miles' coat and hoodie in Earth 42 are green and purple instead of red and blue from his 1610, green and purple being the color of Miles' aura in the 2018 film right before Peter saw the red and blue in him and altered his life trajectory. Also important to note that Aaron's apartment is red and blue, which labeled the red blue from his 1610, green and purple being the color of Miles' aura in the 2018 film right before Peter saw the red and blue in him and altered his life trajectory. Also important to note that Aaron's apartment is red and blue, which leads to my theory that I talked about in another video that these guys might actually be good guys. 43, Rio has green eyes in Earth 42 instead of her normal brown. Could just be the lighting of this room. 44, there's also oh, a sketch of the Prowler Claw in Earth 42 Miles' bedroom. And 45, Miles' poster above his bed is Oshami on a green background instead of Sashimi on red as it is in his bedroom in 1610. 46, Rio asks, do you shoot webs out of your culito, which is Spanish for little butt? And Miles says, I didn't care <laughs> about that once, but no. And since this is connected to the multiverse logic of the MCU, there was that multiverse of madness dream walking rule might apply here in which dreams are technically you period into your life, into your alternate universe self. And both America Chavez and MCU Peter Parker have speculated about alternate Spider-Man maybe shooting webs out of their butts. So there is one out there that does this. 47, on the roof, Aaron's phone lights up as he side eyes Miles, a detail showing that 42 Miles had texted him that he was on his way. Okay. 48, in the 2018 okay. film, we saw Miles going from having his shoes untied to tying his shoes by the end of the movie to show his evolution, his maturity. But now when he's tied up to Aaron's punching bag, he's back to his shoes being mm. untied. 49, while 1610 Miles famously wears Air Jordan 1s with the red and white colors and the black swoosh. Earth 42 Miles wears Nike Airs with alternate black colors. That's and 50, clean. when Gwen has her emotional speech with her dad, the mood ring watercolor background rains down in these specific stripes. Blue, pink, white, pink, and blue. I haven't played Web of Shadows yet. I have to get one last thing and to, to like, the PlayStation works. I literally see it working when it's on my, when I just connect it straight from my HDMI to the to the uh, monitor. But when it goes through the capture card, <laughs> there's just a whole bunch of problems apparently. So I'm getting one last piece and then hopefully it works, but the piece doesn't come till Monday. So yeah, I gotta, you know, figure some shit out for the gaming channel. Well, we got the life of Pi. P, whatever, lies of P, whatever the fuck. We're gonna play that tonight. Blue, which makes the transgender flag. Also on her dad's uniform, his pack, white, pink, and blue, which makes the transgender flag. Also on her dad's I, uniform, I did not his even pack, know that. White, pink, and Wait, is she trans? <laughs> is she gonna end up being trans in the last film? Oh my God. Plot twist, extra plot twists. I'm not gonna lie, that would be kind of crazy. Uh, not in a bad way, just like why? We're like, where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> Maybe she's just like a big supporter of it, you know? She's down with the cause, which is obviously not a problem, but you know, then it's like you gotta think. Like, it's, it's just it's just a lot that goes into it, bro. You seen what happened? Uh, who, who was it? Which one? Was it Nick Merks? Lost, uh, or not lost, but got taken out of the Call of, Call of Duty because of his remarks about uh something. He was like, it shouldn't be like this, like this type of stuff shouldn't be pushed up on kids or something like that. Which is like, you know, like what we're like, what was what, what's wrong? What's wrong with him saying that? Like, what's what's wrong with him saying that? That's that's all I'm saying. But then um, his character got taken out taken out of the call of duty and then dr disrespect was like well then fuck it i'm uninstalling call of duty in blue which makes the transgender flag oh. he said way worse what'd he say So on her dad's uniform, his patch shows a trans flag. And I already mentioned how in gwen's room is the protect trans kids sign now, i'm not telling you what to think i'm <laughs> no he didn't <laughs> what did he say bro because from what I've seen, he, he was just like, yo, don't press this. Like, I, I don't think this should be pressed on kids. I don't even think he was, like, demanding. I think he was just saying, like, I don't think this should be pressed on kids. 
Just saying, these animators use color in this really cool way to show how difficult it can be for kids to reveal themselves to their parents. And now, for all these kids out there, you're not alone. Hey, a reminder to subscribe to our new oh. channel, The Deep Dive, because it's these animators use color in this really cool way to show how difficult it can be for kids to reveal themselves to their parents. And now, for all these kids out there, you're not alone. That's fire. It's an analogy. Or, a, like, a metaphor? Whatever the word is. That's... Wait, that's actually fire. Wait, that's really fire. Holy shit. Wait, that's actually amazing. I feel like that is a... Bro, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I think I literally just witnessed something amazing, okay? I know I dick ride this movie a lot, but now, now, I'm, about, now I'm about to really just dick ride the fuck out of it. I, I feel like there are ways, right? to put out messages or like your stance on things without shoving it in an audience face to where they're just like, oh my God. To where it's just like, like subtle stuff like this, like that, this, this in the background, like it's just, it's just, you know, it's just saying, it's just like, yo, that's fine. Okay, that's fire. Okay, protect, protect trans kids, cool. But that whole thing about like, yo, trying to, she's trying to come out to her father like about what she, who she is and da 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 but it's aligning with a like a trans child or person coming out to their parents that's gas because now as a person who's not trans or like never had to experience coming out to their parents they can understand it in the way of how she's doing it as being like her story you know and so you can relate to it and you can also relate to like a trans kid coming out and, and not even know, bro. Oh my gosh. Wait, that's fire, bro. Because I didn't even notice like it was the colors of the flag in the background the whole time she was talking. I was just like, just say it. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> just let him know. It's okay. Fuck it. He's either going to accept you or not. Who cares at this point? Who fucking cares at this point? Oh my god, nah, this is fire. Hey, a reminder to subscribe to our new channel, The D- Damn, good, good fucking video. Good fucking video, man. Great fucking video. And great movie. Great movie as well. Oh my gosh. And now, all the, like, transphobic people are actually pro-trans and don't even know it. <laughs> It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. You support trans people. You support trans people. You support gay people. There's no turning back. Come on. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. It's okay, man. You stand with the cause. That is so gas. Holy shit. Wait, that's fire. Usually I hate like, usually I just want to see a movie without having to deal with real life shit. But that's just how you do it. Yeah, subliminal, like, subliminal shit like that. Where you... Yo, this, wait, hold on. Yo, thinking about it, this is how, like, all the people who are, like, really... Like, I'm not one of those people who are, like, when it's woke shit in a movie, who are like, oh, brother, great, da-da-da. But I, I do get, like, a... Oh, my God. Like, really? Like, really? Like, I can get over it, though. It's not, it's not that deep. But I feel like the people who are really like that, who really let it get to them who just found out this shit. Yeah, it's corny most of the time. But who are just finding out this shit and the, the, the symbolism that it's representing are like, wait, I actually love that part. I I love that part. And I I didn't even think about it like that. No, like, I can't be a supporter of the cause. <laughs> no! No! It can't be! Bro, <laughs> they not doing nothing to you. Why do you care so much? All right, let's move on, chat. W film, man.